Hello, welcome back to Talking Planning. So this week I won't be bringing you another city review as I've done for the last few weeks. So the world is a bit of a crazy place at the moment and I just think because of that, criticising cities about the way they've dealt with certain issues probably isn't the smartest idea out. So I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I think it's an important time to evaluate how things have happened and use this as a learning opportunity to see what sort of positive change we can make in the world. So this week, instead of doing a city review, I'm going to go back to my earlier styles of videos and I'm going to talk about something that's often criticised but misunderstood and it's a necessary transport planning measure and that is the rail bus. So we're going to start today by clarifying what the term rail bus actually means because depending on who you ask, there's really two completely different things that are called rail bus. So the first kind of rail bus is more so what the term is believed to be in the United Kingdom, and that is a small train, typically a single carriage, that operates on branch line railways instead of having much larger trains. And the reason they've been nicknamed rail buses is many of these trains are actually built from bus components. So some good examples of these are the British Rail Class 139, which is probably one of the funniest looking trains you'll ever see, the infamous British Rail Pacer class, and in Australia, although not necessarily used for the same purpose, Victorian Railways Sprinter class diesel multiple unit is fairly similar to the rail bus by design. So the second type of rail bus, which is what I'm going to focus on today, is what you'd in the UK and many people here would refer to as a rail replacement bus service. So essentially it's a normal bus like this one here that just um, travels between the normal stations via the road network and carries passengers to and from their destinations when trains are unable to run. So I've caught rail buses in a number of cities now across three countries, Australia, the UK and Canada, in Brisbane, Melbourne, uh, Toronto, and of course London. So for ease of understanding, I'm actually gonna break down the on-road rail bus into three separate categories because there are a few different ways to classify rail buses. So the first is the scheduled rail bus service. The second is uh, scheduled track maintenance replacement rail bus. And the final would be emergency rail replacement. So a scheduled rail bus service is a regular service that's put in place to either replace a train service that's no longer viable, provide an additional level of service to supplement an existing train, or to provide a service where a train line is yet to be built. South East Queensland have rail bus services that fulfil all three of these roles. First example I'm going to give you from South East Queensland is the 649 rail bus, which connects from Caboolture Station up to Nambour. It supplements the Nambour train, which off-peak, in most cases, only runs every two hours. So there's a bus service in, in addition to help supplement that service and provide better connectivity up to the sunny coast. So I've caught that... Um, rail bus on a few occasions. It's operated by Kangaroo Bus Lines and it's a fairly decent alternative to the train. So I'd say there are three other key rail bus services in South East Queensland. The 104, the 529 and the 539. So the 104 replaces the old Tennyson Branch Line which is a small piece of track which is today only used for freight that connects the Ipswich and Springfield lines up to the Yorong, Pili and Gold Coast line through the suburb of Tennyson. Now this line still is used for freight but there's no passenger services running along it anymore. So the passenger service got replaced by a bus and that's the 104 which operates Monday to Friday with frequencies between 20 minutes with frequencies between every 20 minutes and every hour depending on time of day. So the service itself is operated by Brisbane Transport the standard blue and yellow buses in Brisbane and provides a, a basic connection where otherwise there would be no service. The next key rail bus, the 529, connects Esk and Tugulua to Ipswich and it operates basically so that commuters living in those much further out regions have access to Brisbane CBD for a standard day at work. I am keen to try that service one day, but unfortunately because it only has basically one or two morning departures and one and two evening departures, and there's no contra-peak bus option, it's really difficult to try unless you're going to stay the night out there or someone's able to pick you up and drop you off along the way. So the 539 is a little bit easier to try. I haven't tried it yet, but I want to catch it soon. And that bus connects Rosewood Station to Lowood and Gatton, 
and the service is a daily service. It also helps people commute into Brisbane and onto locations like Ipswich as it connects up to the Rosewood train. And both of those services, 529 and 539, are operated by Bus Queensland. 529 is operated by the Ipswich Depot and 539 by the much smaller Lockyer Valley Depot. So next, we're going to move on to scheduled track maintenance, rail replacement. So one of the big things that helps our train networks run smoothly and efficiently is preventative scheduled maintenance. A good example of what happens when you don't do this is New York in the 70s and 80s, where parts of the network had to be closed for close to two years for repairs and maintenance that got delayed and delayed and delayed. And it actually ended up becoming quite dangerous. So that's a lesson in what not to do when operating a transport network. So most of the time, uh, a lot of scheduled maintenance requires the complete closure of certain sections of track and network to complete that maintenance. So that means that the trains have to stop. So Queensland Rail typically schedules their closures for nights and weekends where possible to minimise disruption to commuters. And as a result, when they close the line, they provide alternative transport with buses. And in some cases, the network can actually divert some trains but it all depends on the shape and size of the network to minimise closure disruptions. I know with Brisbane, what you'll find sometimes is Gold Coast trains will get diverted via the Tennyson Loop and through Corinda, and then get looped back if they only need to do a closure as far as Yorong Pilly. But that's not all that common because a lot of the time when they do that sort of track closure, they also have to close the city parts of the network. So how does this actually operate? What happens is uh, rail companies will actually usually draw up contracts or arrange charters with private bus companies so that they have vehicles ready to operate those services. Typically in Queensland, what you'll actually find is a lot of rail buses are coaches. So you've got step entry access and underfloor storage. Occasionally you'll actually see urban route buses, articulated buses, sorry, midi buses. And in some times you'll even see mini buses like Toyota Coasters and Mitsubishi Roses, which operate specialist services in between. So now, Sit back and relax and enjoy a montage of all the rail buses that I've spotted across a few cities. So where extra vehicles are needed, um, an as required or AR rail bus will be usually um, will usually be used to cater for passengers. Most of the AR scheduled vehicles in Brisbane are low floor, which allows them to cater for passengers who require mobility assistance or wheelchair access. Sometimes you'll see coaches operating as as required services just for when demand increases and you need to move lots of people between stations and they didn't quite have enough scheduled buses before. So in addition, you'll find emergency rail closures, which are provided when there's an unplanned disruption. So the main reasons for emergency track closure are power or equipment failures or incidents that require police, emergency or fire services. The main aim of emergency track closure is to help get people moving again. So one major innovation in southeast Queensland has been the timetabled rail bus. So this was first introduced with the Commonwealth Games in 2018, 
So to help free up uh, train network capacity, so what they did was they actually closed the Bean Lee Line trains and rescheduled them onto Gold Coast runs, which meant that they could get train frequencies as high as every seven or eight minutes during peak periods when they were needed instead of the half hourly Gold Coast trains that were normal. So what they did was they scheduled buses to replace the Bean Lee section of the line. And it worked quite well. It, and the reason it worked is because they had a timetable. You knew when your rail bus was going to come. And that was something that hadn't happened before then. What basically people were told is they would rock up every half hour um, to replace a train and that's it. But now people actually had some confidence. And, so, and the other big benefit that the rail bus timetable allowed, um, provided was they actually linked rail buses into the TransLink journey planner, which meant even if there was a train delay or there was um, a rail closure, you could find out how to get to your destination using a rail bus. And you didn't just have to try and guess how trains were going to line up with the rail replacement bus and connections at the other end, which were often missed. There was a little bit more certainty there, which is really handy for commuters and puts a bit more trust in that transport system. So I should also quickly note that for a emergency rail bus closure, you're not going to have a timetable. The aim is just to get people on their way to the next station where they can get a normal running train. So you won't see any timetables. It'll just be, here's a bus, get on board. We'll take you to here, and then you get the train again. In summary, rail replacement buses can be a little inconvenient at times. And I think people do get a bit frustrated when they were unsure of a track closure. And there's a bit of, oh, I'm on the rail bus again sort of a moment when it happens. But they are generally there for a very good reason. And that generally means that your um, train surface is actually going to run more efficiently after the closures are done because that tracks will be properly maintained, rolling stock will get the maintenance it needs, and it will generally result in a better quality service once these works are completed. So sometimes there's insufficient demand to justify a rail service, which is where the scheduled rail bus comes in. Other times they are there for scheduled track maintenance to ensure that there's a quality level of service that can be provided by trains normally. And other times there are emergency rail buses there to help allow networks to recover after a major disruption. So it's important to note that transport providers do actually put a lot of time into and effort into um, developing rail bus networks and schedules. And I think generally it's done reasonably well they can be a bit inconvenient, unfortunately. But they really do serve an important purpose. They allow for maintenance to be conducted. They replace services that otherwise would just not be viable or even possible to provide. And they get people moving after a major disruption. And if you're a transport enthusiast like myself, and I'm sure many of the other people who do watch some of these videos, rail buses also serve as a key opportunity to catch quite unusual buses that you'll never see in route service because they're just not suitable for day-to-day -day operations. So if you're unsure about rail buses, one of the things I would be really encouraging you to do is look at Queensland Rail's planned track maintenance calendar. I'll put a link in the description of this video to that so you can go and check it out. What I like is QR actually tell you up to 12 months in advance um, when your next scheduled track closures will be across all lines on the network. So it's really handy. And I would say that if you're a keen traveller, it's really important if you're planning to go out on the weekend, go and have a look. But particularly if you're an event organiser, go and have a look at those track closures before you plan any large scale events so that you don't have people whinging. Oh, there's a track closure. I'm not going to go out because it does happen, unfortunately. The other important thing is those um, track closure information sections are also fed into the Translink website and the journey planner, which you can use to adjust how you travel if there is a track closure scheduled. So as always, if you've enjoyed today's video or found it useful and helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to Talking Planning, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me today on Talking Planning.